For anyone visiting Portsmouth Historic Dockyard, it would be hard to miss HMS Victory. Visited by thousands each year, she is a reminder of what a naval warship once looked like. But when HMS Victory was constructed, she was only expected to operate for nine years without a major repair. Over a long career, Victory's planking has been replaced many times, most recently as part of a project to return the ship to her Trafalgar appearance, which was undertaken between 1955 and 2005. Now, 260 years since HMS Victory was first floated out, work again begins on the replacement of her hull planking, as she is conserved for the benefit of future generations. Nobody's had a view of Victory like this in 200 plus years, opening her up on this scale, and you can see what a first-rate line of battleship looks like when you've taken the skin off, and how complex it is caring for an object like Victory. You know, she's inherently biodegradable. She's made of wood. Wood will rot. The stuff that's been put into the ship before 1955, we're doing our best to keep all of that where it is, and the stuff that was put in after 1955, that's where we've got the big problems. That's what we're replacing with the aim of it lasting at least another 50 years once we finish the work. A ship's planking is traditionally made up from large pieces of solid wood, measuring up to 30 feet in length and weighing in at up to three quarters of a tonne each. The planking attached to a ship's hull gives it both its shape and keeps water out when it's sailing at sea. In 2022, the shipwrights working on HMS Victory began the process of removing the existing planking piece by piece. The first planks removed by the team were from Victory's starboard side, which had been seriously affected by decay caused by the effects of weather that has swept across the harbour. Today we removed the first um, two planks, about 10 metres of, of outer planking, um, to try and inspect the frames underneath to find out the condition of those frames. As expected, a lot of the outer, outer timbers are, are quite rotten, so all of the external planking will be coming off in due course. That is to ensure that we can dry those frames out. They're essentially the structural frame of the ship. Um, therefore, that is the most important thing. We'll be attaching the new planks to those. Hidden in the rotten wood, a whole assortment of creatures and fungi could be found making themselves at home. The challenge for the team at the National Museum of the Royal Navy is making sure that any conservation work they do lasts for a minimum of 50 years. What I'm looking for in particular is evidence of fungal decay. So I'm interested in the fungi that are present in the timbers on the ship and what species they are and how they're decaying the wood. And in addition to that, any sort of insect life that might be present. So it's important to know what kind of decay is taking place and how far gone it is at different locations in the ship so you can work out which areas are most vulnerable to attack once we put new timbers on. So those are the areas that we need to pay particular attention to determining ways to impede fungal activity in the future. The replanking is affecting the ship from the waterline up to the top of the hull. These are the areas where the weather affects both planking and internal frames due to the exposure of rainwater and the summer heat. The planks were removed carefully, avoiding any further damage to the internal frames. The majority of the strip planking cannot be saved due to the extent of the decay and delamination of layers used in the construction. This means all these elements need to be rebuilt. And I say we're starting an area where the timbers are the thickest and in some respects they're quite well protected by, from the weather because the lowest down um, on the ship's hull. What we're generally finding is that it's highly variable. In some places immediately behind me we've got a lot of rot. We can see that the previous lamination um, attempts had failed pretty much from day one. Um, further forward, the lamination has survived much better, and although we've water running out of the ship's side uh, when it rains here, the timber itself is in quite good condition, but this is new timber, it's relatively young timber, younger than I am. Um, it's not the really important stuff that's deeper in the ship, so we need to remove the new stuff to get the ship's side watertight and protect the older material, the most significant material. Whilst most of the action is happening on board HMS Victory, preparations are being made elsewhere for the next stage in the process, the replanking. Each of the 920 planks needed has to be measured and handmade, making each unique. Some of the finished planks will be 11 to 12 inches thick, so a foot thick. The boards we have just here in this one stack is enough to do just two finished planks. 
One of them will be equivalent to the widest plank on board, which is nearly two foot wide. And the other one is for making the longest plank on board, which is about 35 foot long, but that's only 14 inches wide. So, I mean, there's still massive pieces of wood. As work progresses on removing the existing planking from HMS Victory, the team removed 60 tonnes of wood just from the starboard side. On the port side, the shipwrights also discover two futtocks, parts of the ship's frames that date from her time afloat. These futtocks still have signs of their original fastenings, wooden pegs and copper clench bolts, which were used to fix planks to the ship's frame. Yeah, it's all very exciting now, actually. We, we've, now we've got to this stage where uh, the starboard side planking is now removed. We've been doing some uh, surveys recently as well to um, understand the quality of the fixings and the extent of rot within the timber and where the uh, scarf joints are as well, which are the joints between um, uh, along the frames. So we've been mapping that for our structural engineers. They are then going to work with us to model the next phase of work, which will be frame repairs and, um, and internal works um, to ensure the internal structure is also, um, is also sound. During the previous restoration in the late 20th century, Victory's hull was built up in thin layers that were secured in place using wood screws. This time, however, the team are planning on adopting a different method for building the planking to the required size and shape, which will also give them greater stability. This new approach will mean that the outer shell of Victory's hull will last for many years to come. What we do hope is in, is in a decade's time there will be a Victory that is fully re-rigged and looks like she did on the morning of the 21st of October 1805, the Battle of Trafalgar. <laughs>